What's up, Liron here. Today we're gonna learn how to paint this beautiful, loose, impressionistic cityscape uh, scene. Now, one main takeaway from this video, I think, is if there aren't any people of, or if there isn't enough interest in the original reference, you can make everything up. And I really made everything up here. Now, I already made a previous version of this painting that you can see right here. Uh, I love both. What I try to do with this one is to be a little more loose and impressionistic, okay? So I hope you'll enjoy the process and with that being said, let's get started. So we'll get started with the drawing process. This time it's gonna be really, really quick. So horizon line here uh, and we're gonna see how, just how simple of an effect we can create. Um, we do have this kind of a vanishing point around here. So that means I'm gonna take out of that a couple of random lines just to establish the perspective and then we're probably gonna have the road somewhere along this line and it kind of does this curve around here and then comes back like that i do want to put in maybe a car somewhere around here so a car is just basically a uh, square then another square on top of that kind of connecting those with diagonal lines but i'm keeping this very very simple almost to the to the brink of abstract I would say um, our height is the same as a person's point of view which means eye level so we're gonna have one person here another person kind of next to it maybe a little taller and then so that's one just a big lump here two legs really don't need much then another person a little taller like so so these are the two main figures of the scene. Then we're gonna have a bunch of other figures here. Like so just a lot of them. And I'm gonna be really abstract about this because I want the paint to do most of the job. This is really me loosening up. Again, not every painting has to be this way, but for me, this is the case. Now we have this kind of a fence coming from the left, but that's really, it's not that uh, meaningful and then goes back into the vanishing point kind of like this uh, the main part is the floor you want to make sure you get the floor part looking right so somewhere around here like this maybe another person here way at the back notice how i'm holding my pencil i'm barely lifting my and i also think i kind of scratched the paper but that's fine i'm barely lifting it off the paper now for the buildings we're gonna have one major building here goes off to the back and remember that the drawing stage really dictates the, the painting stage for good or bad. And the reason I say that is that if you put in too much, uh, it will constrain your thought when it comes to the paint doing the job, okay? Uh, so this is really important to, if you want a looser approach, you have to draw looser as well, okay? This is really important. So we have this main building here with a bit of, uh, you know, the, the details on it. I'm just putting it in for later on so that I have this kind of a clue or hint like this. A um, couple of lines here. Now we have this larger building here, more at the back, probably more around here. Drop it out down like that. It has this top section here. And then there's another one way at the back that connects to another one way at the back that connects to a bunch of other buildings here at the back. And this is everything we need. We're done with the painting stage, with the sketching stage, sorry. And uh, we just need to make sure that we have a clear vision for what we're gonna do with this, okay? There's gonna be a couple of shadows and we want them to follow the shape of the curb here, of the sidewalk, so that's important. And I do wanna have one um, vertical shadow coming and creeping in through here. So let's change these, the direction of these and this sh shadow here and the shadow of the car and this is pretty much ready to go. So first wash and we're still pretty much at the stage of just having fun. I'm gonna start with a bit of a phthalo blue here and I'm gonna keep this one very simple. All I want is a gradual change from blue to a bit of a warmer yellow. Notice how careless quote-unquote I am with this part, okay? It's the speed in which we're doing this that will cause it to look good, fresh, spontaneous. Now what I'm gonna do is leave a gap, maybe a little lower. I'm gonna leave a gap and come back with some uh, 
Raw Sienna and Nickel as a yellow. This is my preferred choice. I barely have Raw Sienna. I need to probably put more out there. And a bit of uh, this Nickel as a yellow and a bit of red just to turn it into a bit of a orangey kind of warm combination. I'm gonna drop this here and then I'm gonna come back with some water and connect the two. What this will do is make sure that it doesn't turn into a weird green too much uh, and it will keep a distance between the two. Now I do want to warm it up because I want to have a feeling of, I don't know if it's even sunset, but kind of a drama added to the scene. So this is why I'm doing that kind of thing. And then we're gonna pull this all the way down with a bit more red for the road. Maybe the light is casting these interesting shadows and I'm just gonna go like this and whatever highlights I got, I'm gonna keep, okay, some of them. Uh, just because that's gonna create an interesting effect later on, okay? And I know this looks super strange right now, but don't worry, it's gonna look much better and much more interesting later on, okay? I'm gonna fill that entire area up with a bit more yellow, a bit more red. Now what I do find that is that it is important to push the value a little darker in the foreground, like actually have it a little darker Otherwise, you lose the sense of light and shadow. I don't know exactly why that happens, but it, it does. Uh, so just making it a little darker, closer to us. And one last thing, I will already start putting in indication for the people's shirts. You know, I love to do that. So a bit of um, a red here. And then let's get a bit of a green. I want to get a bit of a green going. But we need it to be not too wet because then it'll spread out too much. So here a bit drier like this. We're gonna let this spread out a bit, get soaked. Maybe a bit of yellow for this or these supporting characters. Uh, this is really a fun stage where you can do quite a lot uh, and get away with it. Let's do a bit of a brown. I don't know why I'd want to do that, but I'm just mixing a bit more of a brown mixture here. Maybe kill off some of these highlights that we won't need. Probably here as well. This figure here, imaginary. And that's it, done with the first wash. Now we'll let it dry and continue on with the next one. And one last thing I will add is I do want the buildings to have a warm undertone. So I'm putting back some yellow into them. Now notice how beautifully they're gonna glow uh, later on. Okay, so we've got uh, that first wash down here. Now, I wanna start mixing in a, a pretty grayish mixture for the building and the buildings and the background. Uh, I will keep it a bit more towards the blue um, for now and we'll see how that goes. Now, the magic here really is uh, simplification, okay? I wanna simplify it even more than the uh, original painting of this that I did. So I'm, I'm gonna try and connect as many shapes as I can. Uh, and this is something you really can't I mean, I at least yet cannot control fully, so uh, I may get uh, a result that is not necessarily what I'm after. Uh, and it takes just a lot of skill to be able to do this efficiently and, um, you know, I'm, I'm still learning this stuff. Uh, but in any case, uh, watercolor is really something that's unexpected at times. So uh, right now I'm working on this area and I'm sticking to it. Uh, as much as I can. Now I'm gonna water down this part and the reason for that is that this entire uh, building, the more they fade to the left, I wanna get rid uh, of the value and make it much lighter. So I'm gonna go over this lower section of that building, cut around that sharp edge here. Now here I'm gonna get a nice little uh, effect of light reflecting on some of the windows of this building uh, and I want to make sure that it works well all the way to the bottom here. Now the building turns away from us so this part I'm gonna just indicate using these lines and the effect will come from the feeling of light again being reflected uh, over the from the sunlight strong sunlight over the building this goes all the way to the bottom and probably around here I'll just kill that effect off now these buildings here in the background should be even bluer and lighter. So I'm adding more blue to the mix, going over them, 
like so. All I want to make sure I do is, is keep my uh, whatever little highlights that are necessary I want to preserve. Uh, now I'm going to start adding in a bit more warmth um, with this building. So just a little more red to it. Probably a little bit more red and yellow. <clears throat> because this one is, is getting a little brown really. Uh, and I will connect it with this building here up top. Like so. So that's the top part of that building. Then uh, we have a part that gets kind of in the middle. We have this pole. Very carefully put that in. We have this part here. It should be darker, but we'll get that later on. There's a little fly here, <laughs> uh, like so. I'm going to connect it to this part as well. Like this negative paint around an additional pole like the previous one. And here there is this shadow moving through. We're, we'll probably darken this in just a moment. And we have this rounded shape coming around the building. And this is all me just simplifying what I see. And because I already tackled this scene once, I'm much better equipped now to do that again. Here we have an important highlight I want to work around. Um, and I will probably lift some of that left edge because that has to be a little lighter like that. And then the right part should be a little darker on the other hand. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use another brush here to, to work on that part. So I add just a bit more blue, red, yellow, trying to keep it fairly muted just to have that kind of shadow around here. A little more blue, like so. It's not fully uh, muted, but that's fine. Then this part here is a bit darker and then we have a stronger shadow here. I'm gonna need to strengthen this uh, significantly more in just a moment. And then we have some shadows cast by some more poles here uh, that I will bring back maybe using a, a, a gel pen. Um, you will later on understand everything you're looking at. I know right now it's a bit of a mess. So now I need some darker paint, significantly darker paint, and I need to darken this section, okay? This will really help uh, the building read better. And now, one last attempt to lift some of this left area, and we're done. We'll move on with this building here on the right, and hopefully I didn't lose the wetness of the wash. Uh, there is some text here, but I just painted around that. Now, I liked the idea of playing around with the temperature a bit more, so I'm going to use a bit stronger blue here, like so. And I'll allow these two to connect, but not too much, these two areas. Like this. This part is fairly important because there's going to be an, a major highlight here. Um, but I do want to straighten out this little line. And it's fine if I'll get some backgrounds, I don't, I don't mind that. Now a little bit more warmth as I move on to the, uh, this section of the building, like so. And I'm gonna connect this all together. Start warming up this side. A bit more red, a bit more yellow. The whole idea is, I don't want too much variation, but I do want some. And I'll probably need to start about thinking about darkening some of these uh, areas as well. So let's add a bit more brown. Let's do a bit more brown with this like this, and start to slowly and gradually darken some of these areas up. A bit more paint here. Close that gap off. Now here I'm gonna connect while it's still wet, there are some windows like this, sorry, I need to follow this line basically, like so. And start to darken this entire section. Now hopefully something starts developing here and many times you won't know exactly what it is, uh, but that's just a part of, of painting really, at least until you learn how to develop and have more control. I'm still at that stage where I'm really learning a lot. Uh, but in any case, I'm gonna put this here. Now here we come to an interesting part because 
I do want to get in some shadows here indicating that this building is at the back. Maybe that there's a line moving here. Went a little rough here, but that's fine. That's going to work. Uh, that's too much. That's way, way, way too much. I'm going to try and fix that somehow. Okay, here we go. Connect this. I'll try not to get it to look too overworked. This is me just doing too much here. Uh, but in any case, now we need to start thinking about the lower section right around this part and there's gonna be a lot of negative painting around random objects, random people. I'm gonna leave a couple of highlights here and there really uh, that I can use for whatever I need later on. Let's darken this whole thing up like this. Uh, but the most important detail I think here is actually gonna be the car that I'm gonna put in like that so it has the roof and I'm changing it a bit to suit my needs here. Now here there's going to be a person, a bunch of random objects here. This is the windscreen. And you'll slowly see how the shape of it starts to come to life. It's not going to be perfect because I'm really trying to simplify here and and I'm, I, this is a skill I'm working on basically. So, but here we go. This is the front part of the car, like this. Now it connects to the shadows or the shapes rather of the tires. And then the cast shadow moves somewhere around here and somewhere around like this. Here we go. Mirrors, like so. Uh, we have a person here that I already am going to take the opportunity to connect with the car's shadow. So something like that. Very quick, rough, messy, that's fine. We have the uh, sidewalk edge here. Now I have to connect it to this section because I want it to... Uh, I want a negative paint around the people in this area. So I'm just going to start off with a bit of a dark blue. Now I turned it blue because it's actually blue in the reference, but uh, whatever, it doesn't really matter the exact paint. Now the people here, I uh, really left a big mess around them. Uh, so let's do this head, shoulder, head, shoulder, like so, like so around these people as well. And slowly but surely it starts to look like something. That's really how it works. Um, like this, a bit darkness here into the bottom part and cast shadow. I feel like that's going to be necessary later on, so might as well do it now. A bit of shadow here as well. Uh, in between the people. Now here it's important because I'm going to start connecting more shapes. So the shadows of the people, I really want to get them in in this go. Then I have to con continue this left section. Let's maybe warm it up just a bit or neutralize it rather. Go back over it. Like so. And you see I'm very loose with my lines. I really allow myself a lot of freedom here. Um, so that's pretty much it for this person on the left. Now person on the right. Now this person, shoulder. Another shoulder. So, and you get this nice sense of light already around the bottom. Now, here's what's really important. We're going to have the shadow cast by the, the actual wall here towards this section. And I already want to connect that as much as I can with the legs and all sorts of details like that. Because that's really going to help this have a more um, sense of togetherness, I would say. Uh, let's warm up the shadows a bit on the ground. And this wash really is the wash that will make, quote unquote, the painting. So here we go, like that. Connect this. Now, around the sidewalk, you do want to make sure that you change the direction of the shadow, or, or rather the placement, I would say. Let me show you what I mean. This is the sidewalk up until this part, but then the shadow has to move downwards just a bit to indicate the step. Okay, like so. These people also are connected. We'll probably have to darken some of that uh, later on, but this goes like that. 
And this is pretty much it for this wash. A bit mess, messy and uh, all over, but you'll get uh, the sense of light a little better once I add some darker shadows for the people. I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. We'll actually continue. We don't even need to stop. So I'm gonna grab a lot of red because that's how I, I currently at least do the faces that are against the light. I'm just gonna start putting in some darker red here. It's not really red, it's more of an orange, but still. Like this, like that. Now you'll see how this slowly builds up the sense of light better. Now here, I'm gonna sh darken this figure on the right using a red biased mixture. So a bit more red. I need a bit more red for this, here we go. Leaving a highlight for uh, the shoulder, really important. Now this figure, I'm, I'm really thinking about what to do with it. Maybe let's do something like that. And then this little tie, teeny tiny tie. <laughs> um, a bit more blue, like so. I'm gonna bring back some lost highlights in just a moment, probably. That's a person, that's another person. Let's darken these shadows for the legs. This is really like a very common way of doing this. I'm trying to break free of this common way of uh, painting people, but that's something that uh, will hopefully I'll be able to develop better with time. Um, it really depends on the scene. If I'm on location, I'm doing people much differently. So uh, it really does make a difference. Here, there's another person. This one I'm gonna darken like so, just blue blue on top of that connect these areas um, and then for the people here I'm just gonna add a couple of hints at people uh, let's see this is head this is a head 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 this is a person here as well um, like this I'm thinking about what else this needs it doesn't need much really this is almost done like this I think I will darken the area behind the people just a little bit. So, and I do want this to be a little more muted. I don't need it to scream, I'm blue. So, and, and probably this area where the wall breaks, I'm gonna have a bit of a stronger shadow there. And this is all done almost a la prima, as you can see, really just one go and that's it. So I'm gonna put this paint here. That'll make the people maybe pop just a little more. Like this. And this has to cast a longer shadow. The actual wall has to cast a longer shadow. And I think with that, we're pretty much done. Uh, I'm gonna allow this to dry and then come back and add some final elements and details to the walls, to the buildings, to everything. So really the vast majority of this painting is done. Now we have a couple of challenges to deal with and that is how we add just what's necessary, nothing more, uh, so that we don't destroy this uh, painting. Now, one thing I do feel, and that is the largest shape uh, I need to work on, is I feel like this building here isn't distinct enough. I do want to make some kind of a differentiation. So I'm going to glaze it. And again, when you glaze, and I talked about this several times before, you just want to go over it as quick as you can. Minimum fussing. You don't want to ruin what's there. Okay, you don't want to lift back up a previous layer. You just want to fill in the space as quickly as you can. Now notice what beautiful of a differentiation it makes between the two buildings, okay? Just putting it like that here. Now this building actually wraps around that building. So what I'm gonna do is start wrapping around it like so. But then I wanna kind of um, mute this meeting section like that and this is pretty much it okay for this one um, now what we're left with is just adding some dry brush uh, effect or rather uh, details to the buildings in the background so we need a lot of paint and really little water we don't need much water for this stage and uh, it, it's always important to pay attention to these things and maybe even test it out on a test paper that I have here just to make sure you get the desired effect. So now it's emptied of water. I'm just gonna start putting in these rows of windows 
and details of the building like this, kind of moving around. A couple of actual windows, but again, the, the magic here is you don't need as much. You just kind of need to hint at a few and the rest will follow, uh, as they say. Uh, <clears throat> let's see here, get rid of more paint. A couple of other um, windows. And again, you just want to make sure you don't do too much of that. As long as you avoid that overworked look, you're good to go. This is all I think this needs. Just a couple of more indications around the bottom. Let's get rid of more paint here. Like this. Um, now, what, what's missing right now is we have no connection between the bottom and the top. And the way to get that kind of connection is going to be by doing this uh, poles that come from uh, top to bottom. These were actually present in the scene, but very uh, few. Now I'm gonna exaggerate it just a bit. I'm switching over to my rigor brush because I need some very thin lines. I load it up with as much paint as I can, pretty much gray, just mixing all my primary colors, and then just going for it. And you have to start slowly and see how it works, really. So that's one, like so. That's gonna be the main one with a couple of details here. And it's good that it's broken, I actually like that. And I'm gonna add just a couple of others here around this section, one here, another one there. And this will help us kind of pull the scene together. So I'm gonna connect it with a couple of actual wires running around. Now we're gonna need a bit more water and paint here because this is a rather long line. I wanna get it in one go. Uh, this is always a risk, like this. Maybe some other details around these at the back. Kind of like that. It will be nice to put another one on the left uh, because here it's gonna be a little more visible because of the buildings here are quite, uh, quite light. Um, now we have this sidewalk here that has to have a bit of a shadow and I haven't put that in. Um, I'm just going over some details. It's, it's really random, a lot of it. Um, just going with my feeling because what, what happens is the eye is looking for more areas to stop and rest on, okay? This is really what's important and you want to provide that for the viewer. That's the, the main idea here. And if, if the viewer doesn't have these small details as imaginary as they may be, uh, to stop and focus on, then that's gonna be a problem for them. So, so I'm just adding a couple of these here. That's that's really the, the whole goal of what I'm doing right now. Um, now there are a couple of details here in the shadow. That, so I'm just gonna add some shadows around the highlights, some lines here and there. Um, and I think with that, there is one larger shape and that's gonna be it. We're gonna wrap it up with that. There is this shadow on the right that I do wanna get. This is the top part. And then on the right, it goes around all across this section. The reason why is that it's the, this building goes like that and it's the right side, it's in the shadow. So that's that. And maybe another pole here with this larger brush. And a couple of other straight lines. I'm gonna take the white gel pen just to add a bit of a highlight to the left side of this pole, like so. Maybe just a bit here and there. And I said I'd bring out some kind of highlight, this part here there are some poles in front of the building. Hopefully you can see this and it makes sense. Um, a couple of highlights of the people. Let's straighten some of these out. So here, just shoulders. Really just bringing out some shoulders is what we're doing. Maybe tightening their shape a bit. These two can stay like that. They're rather, they look like zombies, but that's fine. There's this person here, head, shoulder, head, shoulder bit of a stronger highlight here and I think with that we're pretty much done here there's a good sense of light and shadow there's a good feeling of of everything let me show it to you up close 
Uh, I love the shadows on the street, so sh suggesting strong sunlight. Um, another thing we could do, it's a bit of a risky move, but I'm gonna go for it. You know what, let's, let's actually lighten up this whole section. This entire part here. I'm gonna use the um, gel pen on the side and then come back here, just to bring out some more of a, of a highlight of the, and the top part of the car. Um, so yeah, this is it. This is done. Enough details. I'm not touching these buildings. They, these are way too at the back. You don't want to bring out any details with those. Then we have these people around here. Some interesting things in the background. Who knows what they are really. Uh, a lot of it comes down to your personal way of conveying what you see and there's a lot of artistic freedom to be had. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this process and now we can wrap it up. So this is it for today's process. I hope you enjoyed it. And once again, for comparison's sake, here are the two results. Um, I really do feel like this one has some things that are better at it. I actually like the color harmony a little better in this one. Um, I did make a few small changes after I finished recording and that is um, I, I corrected the shape of the top of this building. I added a bit of more shadow here to the people that are in the shadow that should be in the shadow. But this is pretty much it. You've seen all the process. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you have and also subscribe. I have tons of processes just like this one. Long, full, narrated, quick, time lapse, everything and anything you may want. Uh, regarding my nose, it starts to feel better and better with every passing day, but I'm still a little weak. So I'm trying to take it easy at times and not to work myself too hard. Uh, but in any case, this is it. Thank you so much. Take care. And we will talk again real soon.